All right, welcome back everybody to hour two of the very first week of Lost Initiative. Uh, real quick recap, if you're missing, we uh, all got hired for a job in a bar. We agreed to meet somewhere at dusk. I, my character's currently sitting out there waiting for the other three. The other three decided to get drunk and sing karaoke. And now I'm waiting we for them. We agreed to. Mathis is the only one that showed up. <laughs> That's such a great synopsis of our first hour, man. Yeah. That was perfect. <laughs> All right. So I'm sitting there uh, as the sun is down, and I'm kind of like tapping on my on my books, uh, visibly irritated if anybody's walking by, though I don't know how busy the streets are. And uh, after about, I'll, I'll say I give it like five or ten minutes. If they don't show, I just start quick walking. I don't run, but I'm with a with a quickened pace. I start making my way to the bar where I know they last were. Absolutely. I'd like to actually describe that. So um, in at least in the Shao District, so where you originally were was not inside the Shao District, the uh, place that you would be walking out of. And um, uh, aside from the guards that are over at that side of the city, there are very few people moving about uh, th this area of the city. Once you enter into the Shao District, again, it's just much more populated than the, uh, the rest of the, uh, the city is. So there are a lot of people moving about. There are, there are whether it be um, just drunk people stumbling around, coming from the bars, or are people, you know, just uh, continuing to keep their shops open late, or whatever the case may be. You did say just after dusk, and in the summertime, that is very late, mm -hmm. but it's not like obscenely late. So there are still a, a ton of people around because, again, very populated area. Go ahead. Okay. So yeah, I just I'll make my way through the people. I'm not like actively being violently pushing. I'm just kind of avoiding them as necessary. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And making my way back to the broken bottle. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Broken bottle. <laughs> All right. So uh, you go uh, walking in. Before you even uh, walk into the door, just maybe grabbing the handle and just gathering your, your will right before you, uh, yep. you open up the door. Trying to keep you my hear... anger under control. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you hear uh, a little bit of uh, noise coming from the other side. It's like uh, a bit of a melody coming from the other side. When you whip open the door, what you see is that most of the people in the bar are actually singing along to the three of them standing and singing together. Um, <clears throat> what they're singing is uh, uh, some horrible rendition uh, of a war song to Grumsh that Grauman had started up that Otto happens to know off the top of his head and that um, uh, Rai is just doing the best she can to uh, mouth along and mumble along, but getting really loud during the parts where, where she knows because of the chorus. Uh, I take a deep breath. I, I visibly am trying to maintain fury, essentially, and I make my way pushing through the crowd at this point if they're all this i'm assuming there's like a crowd in front of them um the place the place has nearly tripled in business since then uh <laughs> One, it's late, so obviously there are more people that are able to be out drinking, and, and two, it's actually quite the entertaining atmosphere f for most people. And so it's drawn a bit of a crowd from passersby. Okay. I'm pushing through the crowd. Yep. And I will, until I get to the stage. Uh, and if I can get there, are they within, is any of them within arm's reach? Uh, absolutely. I mean, there, there's, when you say stage, we're talking like, like a, a step, step up. up. Yeah, no. okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'll reach forward notice? for if Otto is within reach. He's the one I write. I reach for. Have and, you noticed Donk has come back? Well, all of you are a little bit intoxicated. So um, let me just. I would say, um, I would say Rai notices. Uh, uh -huh. Gromit being uh, the most intoxicated and Otto being the most into the music. I would say Rai is the one that notices what's going on. Mm. Rai hasn't been drinking that much. She's just been enjoying. Yeah. the fun and it's one of these rare occasions where um and she knows this is a safe place but she's taken the the cloak off and you see like um their skin you see the tail you see the horns she's got like a uh, kind of a low-cut tunic on um like lightweight almost thievish attire and uh and she immediately sees thunk and kind of like has the oh shit face moment when she covers the mouth <laughs> and kind of grabs her cloak and throws it on and is elbowing Grom. <laughs> like, let's go. Yeah, she's elbowing oh. Grom and she's putting the, the cloak on. Uh, Grom <laughs> grabs, like, puts your, his arm around you because he thinks you're, like, <laughs> hitting on him. <laughs> 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 mm -hmm. Oh, that's awesome. All right. 
uh, and I will, if you're not stop, like, I just stop me, I reach, I reach forward, and I'm looking to grab Otto by, like, just the clothes, not, like, I'm not gonna want to choke him or break a leg, but, like, li th th in my mind, this is Otto's fault, so, because this... <laughs> Completely catch him off guard, and you're yeah. easily able to to, to grasp him. And I, I will yank him off stage mid mid line of the song, pissing everybody off, and like pull you down to like ice eye, eye level, and just kind of glare at you. I feel like I feel like punk is like the mom who comes in. He's like, <laughs> and he's like, you kids get back to school. Uh. So, yep. uh, Thonk grabs me. I'm, I'm fairly inebriated at this point. Thonk! I, it's Thonk! I know you, you, I remember you were here when we were in the other room. Hey! Hey, grab me! It's Thonk! You remember Thonk? <laughs> As Rai is already like, let's go. Come on, Thonk! The party people! Come here! <laughs> okay, so I just yank him off the stage at that point and, uh, give him, and I, I like, pick, looking at him like, the, this. No, I'm not going to say. It. I just yank him off the stage, and uh, I start dragging you out. As I, I, cause I, I'm assuming my perception is pretty good. I assume I saw Rye be like, "Oh shit, time to go," kind of thing. So uh, yes, you did. Rai, Rai, you saw Rye's reaction. Yeah. So I know Rye already knows, and Gromin, it will. <laughs> I've got Otto, and I'm dragging him out. <laughs> That's my plan. <laughs> Can I uh, attempt to escape Grom's uh, headlock? Grasp. <laughs> I'm not well, like super for that? hard, so I think like if you if you try to wiggle your way around, I I'd let go of you. All right. I imagine Rye has a lot of experience uh, having to get away from large men. Yeah, yeah. I just I just give it a little. What are you uh, saying about her? Out of out of his arm and uh, and dash into the crowd after Adder. Awesome. So um, uh, Grommin, you see him carrying. Uh, Addo out of there, and you see Rai quickly uh, getting, uh, r jumping from your grasp and following after them. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm like mid song, and I realize that like my backup singers are gone, and then I go into shine mode, and I'm like, Ugh. <laughs> and I, like <laughs> I look around, and I'm like, oh man, what's happening? And I see them all kind of like making their way, and Rai's kind of like give me this look, and I'm like, what the heck? And so I start kind of making my way towards where they're running off to. Awesome. All right, so uh, Thonk, as soon as you, uh, I imagine the next time you're gonna wanna have words is as soon as you uh, burst out of the tavern and into the streets where it's much quieter. Um, and uh, the rest of you, the uh, while it's summertime, it is much cooler than it was in there. The cool air outside uh, is a little bit sobering as is the mood that Thonk has just set. So mm. Thonk, you burst through the door, Addo in hands and- I just Ryan toss him. Out. I toss him, I add him to the ground, just like mm -hmm. nonchalantly. And as are the other two like coming out like immediately behind me? Uh, Rai like in tow and Gromit a few steps behind that. Okay. Uh, I won't, even, like I'll look quickly to Rai and quickly to Gromit, but mostly focus on Otto. And I say, you had an agreement to be doing this job, not sing songs. We've got eight hours until we're supposed to be there. Come on, thonk. <laughs> You realize that he told us to leave at a particular time because it would take us time to get there, correct? Yeah, but you're so unless big. You, unless you, you understand, unless you're a wizard of the arcane arts and know the spell teleport. Well, I don't want to brag, but I do. Riley, like, Riley like pushes through the crowd, and you can hear like the booze behind her. <laughs> as they've interrupted like the entertainment, and all she hears is Thong say, "Use teleport," and she's like, "Ah." Oh. You're a wizard? <laughs> You're a wizard, you didn't know? I look back and I say, he's not a wizard. <laughs> oh. You're a wizard. <laughs> but as, as Thog turns to say that to Rai, I, I, I gave a little, yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> Her eyes widen. She's just like, <laughs> good lord. I mumble like to myself, audibly, the sooner I can get rid of you, the, the better. I'm dying. <laughs> I'm making my way to the gate. Whether the three of you follow in tow or none of you follow in tow, I'm going to earn my keep. And I walk. I, I decide that I'm probably better off sticking with Thonk, so I, I, I uh, meekly follow behind. And the other two, I imagine, follow as well. Yeah. Hood, um, not hood up. 
in the crowd. I'm still like, stumbling behind, so like I'm be I'm behind her, but I don't really like know where I'm going. I'm just like kind of following. Raya occasionally turns around and like raises her hand out of the crowd, <laughs> just so that Grot doesn't get lost. <laughs> So uh, you guys, uh, it takes you a little bit of time, but you do uh, find your way out the gate that you uh, you need to leave, <clears throat> you need to leave from. And uh, when you finally get there, it's this is where you were supposed to meet, uh, albeit over an hour prior. And um, uh, you're now standing uh, at the gate and have to decide where it is you're going from here. Uh, you still haven't seen exactly where it is that you're going. So okay, that's you, Grumman. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I don't see where I'm going. Is that what you uh, said? You didn't know exactly where it was you're going prior. You happen to have the map on you. Oh, are they like looking at me and waiting for me to show them where to go? Yeah, Rai is like waving, making sure you're following, keeping her hand in the air. <laughs> okay, well, I'm, I'm following her, I guess, until yeah, yeah. you guys like tell me what to do. Otherwise, he's just going to be like following and kind of being a little derpy. Yeah, after you guys get through the city and you're finally at the gate, or maybe even just walking out the gates together, um, you you it's now at this point where you realize, okay, we made it to destination A, which is the uh, the gate itself, but where is destination B exactly? How do we get there? So um, okay. you guys are either at the gate or through the gate and yeah. walking down the road now. Yeah. All right. Are you guys I'll, asking me about it? Or? Yeah, as soon as we start, like we're a goodish distance away from guards or earshot of anybody, I will I'll look over and just uh look to you Grom, and say uh take out the map oh yeah that yeah oh uh, yeah <laughs> he like goes and like pulls it out of his bag <laughs> he's like he opens one and it's like he pulls it out and he opens it for you all to see and like you look at it and you're like you kind of like look at it weird it's like a picture of an orc chick she's kind of naked he's like <laughs> it's like oh oh not that one he puts it back. He pulls out the other one. He pulls it out, and uh, there's the one that you guys are looking at. And he pulls out the map and shows you it. Yep. He had given you two uh, two uh, rolled up pieces of parchment. The first one that you open up is in fact the map, and it, it's it's pretty easy to follow if you have any familiar uh, familiarity with maps, which two of you happen to. And um, you can see that it's as I said, uh, whatever distance that would take uh, sober. Uh, half works to walk a solid uh, four hours to get there, uh, walking at a, a good pace. But considering you now have a halfling with you and it's not everybody sober, um, it will take a bit longer than that to get there, maybe even uh, upwards five hours because you're going to want to stop here and there. Um, How long do we have? Uh, at this point, about eight hours to get there. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. So you do. You do I don't want that drunk. He knew. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're a big dude, right? You can carry it. Yeah, you got some Andre the Giant metabolism. Yeah, at this yeah. point, I'm pretty drunk, and uh, I kind of give Otto the look. What? I know I'm playing the games, and I lost the bet, so I owe you a piggyback ride. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming that throughout the night, you played the dice game with me, and I'm, like, uh. really into the dice game. It's that. Uh, you know, my friend Forston wasn't in, Thonk wasn't in, and uh, I appreciated that you you joined me, so I, I let you jump on my back. I think oh. my, uh, my my sleight of hand may have played a role in allowing me to win the bet for the orc back. I'm guy. sure. If I find out you cheated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I got it out of you, and I knew I would. Oh, wow. That was amazing. All awesome. right, I take the halfling on my back, and I start walking. I turn around, I look at Thonk, and I'm like, are you coming? Oh, I'm walking. <laughs> oh, I'm walking. Yeah. As uh, as she or he has me on his back, I I begin to reach through his bag and pull out that image of the half naked orc girl from before and just oh my God. begin just studying <laughs> inquisitively. Because <laughs> no, I did. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so good. Nice. Oh, that was good. That's good. Okay, so um. <clears throat> Uh, I think I, I could I, carry you in my backpack. I bet you could. Yeah, no, like, that's just a that's a halfling like bag. For you at this point. <laughs> you don't want to tear the seams. You don't want to tear the seams. All right, so um, uh, I, I was wrong. There's actually ten hours left to get to get there. So you guys have a little bit more time. But th either way, so um, sometime some point in time during the travels, uh, as you guys are traveling at night, which is actually easy since all three of those that are 
foot to ground uh, are able to see very well at nighttime. Uh, <clears throat> at some point in the time, Brahman does remember that she do he does have the other uh, the other rolled up piece of parchment in his bag uh, that was given to him by Forston. Uh, do you take that out and look at it, or do you just wait until you get there? <clears throat> um, yeah, I mean, maybe I'm like, you know, walking and I'm like getting a little bored carrying the walk, this. The walk is sobering. Yeah, it's sobering. <laughs> Donk is a party pooper. He's totally killed my buzz. Uh, so I'm going to pull out the, <laughs> the scroll and check it out. Is awesome. this one like a private one that he gave just to me then? Well, I mean, you open it up to look and, and okay. uh, to see whether or not that was the case. And inside you actually do see a sigil, like a, a symbol, uh, which you imagine, <clears throat> well, maybe you do or don't put it together. But he did mention that there is a symbol that he would describe to you um, uh, that would be on the side of the uh, the wagon. Uh, oh, yeah, the yeah. Symbol, sorry. The symbol is like three uh, swooping checks all kind of connecting with one another. So you can imagine it's like one kind of swooping this way, another this way, and a third this way. Uh, all making almost like a, a bit of a, uh, a vortex. Um, the the symbol is, like I said, it's like a, a nice swooping check mo um, um, uh, design, but the uh, checks themselves are uh, red in color. Uh, the red is of like, it's almost like a yellowish, orangish, reddish color, um, different uh, colors to it, making it quite the integral uh, design. So it's not one that you are familiar with at all, Grauman. Do you choose to share this with the party or? All right, first he pulls it out and he's like, ooh. Wait, wait, hold on, I gotta have the voice. <laughs> ooh, pretty. <laughs> he put this other thing in here. Maybe this is the thing on the wagon? <clears throat> um, so everybody's welcome. I don't recognize it. And he starts like putting it upside down and on the side, and he's like looking at it from all these different angles. Awesome. Otto puts the picture of the half-naked orc girl up above it to see if maybe there's a secret image in within. <laughs> hey, uh, Otto, no! <laughs> he takes it and he like, come, he like, pulls it back up really like nervously and puts it, this time like, in his, like, uh, he's got like this sash thing that's holding up his, mm. his, uh, shoulder pad and he like, kind of jams it in there. Otto's been lording it over Grauman the entire walk, so he's just getting tired <laughs> of all the bullshit. Um, so you, uh, uh, my apologies. So you, uh, all are looking at this thing, trying to see if it's familiar to you. Everybody's welcome to roll a history check to see if it's, uh, if it's familiar or not. Switch all right, to, uh, everybody except for oh, Grauman, man. because there's no way you'd make it. Yeah. Well, hey, man. <laughs> I mean, not Is that a not. history check? History, yes, sir. Okay. I want to roll just to know. Oh, God. Oh, not too bad. Um, right. awesome. Addo, so, uh, Addo actually is uh, able to make it, and um, Addo, you're able to know that this is a uh, family uh, sigil. Mm. Uh, uh, it is the family of Dimitra. Um, more important than that, um, uh, sorry, it's a it's a family sigil of Dimitra. It's a family that is uh, native to Thesk. Actually, more specifically, it's a family that is uh, of much repute in Telflam specifically. Teflon being uh, the largest city inside Vesk. Uh, that was, sorry, Demetra? Demetra, D-M-I-T-R-A, Demetra. Oh, I do recognize these symbols. This is the family Demetra. Yeah, a very prominent name in Vesk. Uh, does that name ring any bells? <clears throat> uh, it does not to, uh, uh, it does not to any of you. Or actually, hold on, give me one second, my apologies, just to confirm that. Uh, the name does not seem familiar to any of you, no. Uh, after like a moment of silence, I'll just look back over to Otto and uh, kind of ask you to clarify. What, is, what are they known for? Uh, what, what are they known for? <laughs> <laughs> My apologies. Very wealthy merchants out of, uh, out of Telflam. They are very wealthy merchants out of Telflam. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Good information. Wealthy merchants. Oh, All by right. the way, Waybear, just so you know, because I know mm -hmm. it's like your first time playing DD. You can totally take what the DM says, and you can say whatever you want. Oh yeah, you can straight up lie. Okay. If you felt yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, no, I didn't. Yeah, do that. Like, I, yeah. I give you vanilla, you flavor it. <laughs> all right, uh, all right. Knowing wealthy merchants doesn't really mean much to me. I shrug, and uh, we'll just continue walking. Absolutely. Um, yeah. 
So, uh, so many hours later on, we, again, a combination of, um, of just people being intoxicated and so on and so forth. It does take you a little bit longer to get there. So it does take you five hours. Uh, the good news is when you do arrive, um, you have a, uh, a long while for you to sit and rest and even some of you to sleep if you'd like to um, <clears throat> really get that alcohol out of your system and, um, and freshen your minds. So um, you guys are able to rest for a little while. Do you choose to put up like a, a sleeping order or anything like that at this location or? Do we plan on sleeping? That's the, I guess that's uh, the other question. If I get the opportunity to sleep, Grauman's sleeping, but okay. he'll, he'll definitely go in a roto if, if you need to do that. <laughs> I would prefer, I mean, I have no problem taking first watch if people need to sleep, sleep off the alcohol. I mean, there's only, what, three hours? You got three uh, hours? Uh, five, it's five. it's uh, about five hours, yeah. I mean, obviously you want to wake up as they're arriving, or do you, Grumman? No, no, I'll, I'll wake up on time. Mm -hmm. I'll take a nap. Brad takes a nap. Yeah. All right, yeah, I'll stand watch. <clears throat> she pulls the hood a little bit further down and sets up next to a log and just kind of, you can just hear like little snoozes. Okay. Awesome. Oh, so. Little snoozes. Um, Grumman, uh, where are you like? Where are you keeping watch, uh, Thonk? Uh, so well, yeah, where it is that you guys are actually set up? My apologies. Is uh, off the side of the road, some uh, a little bit of distance um, off the road. So you take a right off of the road in the ways that you're traveling. Um, there are some rocks set up. It's like again the, the X mark spot. And once again, you, where you are, you can clearly see there's a. Um, natural seeming ditch behind those rocks the rocks are piled up in a way that is very obscuring from the road but despite that fact you're able to actually see uh the road itself perfectly clearly okay. even if you couldn't see over here from the road anyways um <clears throat> so everybody's able to pile up kind of over in this area not on top of each other there's tons of space um so he's able to take watch right there be perfectly invisible from the road and, and still stand over you guys uh unless you choose to do otherwise of course nope that's fine I'll just keep an eye on the road and an ear open for anything else mm -hmm. while they um, nap. Before Grumman sleeps, he walks over to, to Thonk now that he's kind of sobered up. Mm -hmm. uh, and, he, and he says to him, I'm sorry if I offended you, Thonk. I was just trying to get to know the rest of our party. Thank uh, you for taking the first watch. And I'll he, just, like, yeah. goes and Yeah, I'll let you walk. And uh, I'll give you, like, a small nod if you notice, and I will keep watch as you all nap uh can i can i use Grumman's satchel as a sleeping bag <laughs> is that so Grumman sees you trying to like use the the bag and he's just like shaking his head uh he pulls out a bedroll he puts it down use it <laughs> get your own like I'm your little pet. This is gonna be the best relationship ever. <laughs> <laughs> I ship it. I ship it. <laughs> awesome. All right. So you guys are able to uh, get a little snuggled up or whatever. Now the details at this point aren't very important. Um, maybe sometime in the future. But for now, everybody's able to get, let's say, about three hours of sleep, give and take watch. Um, you know, kind of like mixing up here and there. Maybe even somebody gets as much as five because they choose not to watch, or sorry, four and a half because they choose not to watch. Doesn't matter. You all get enough uh, rest that you're feeling fine the next day. Um, <clears throat> you uh, have a little bit to drink, you have uh, water. Uh, you have a little bit to, to eat and everybody's feeling fine. So uh, the sun does uh, come up a while ago. It makes it a little bit harder to sleep because of it, but you know, I'll throw something over your eyes, whatever the case may be. But eventually, uh, whoever happens to be standing watch at the time, um, I'm just gonna roll a D4 to see who it is, and I'm gonna do it based off the order of what screens I have in front of me. Oops, sorry. Are you rolling a real dice? No. Oh. Three. So that's Bear. Bear is up at the time that. Um, why would you like me? I have tons of dice right here. <laughs> uh, uh, so Bear. Uh, uh, Bear is the one that happens to be awake at the time. So uh, it's Addo that's awake as um, a wagon is heard and seen uh, off in the distance um, uh, while he's kind of at watch. At this point in time, maybe others are awake, maybe others are asleep. Uh, it doesn't really matter so much, or maybe they're just kind of like off, you know, relieving themselves, whatever the case may be. Addo, you can grab their attention. Uh, I. I actually visibly contemplate yelling to wake them up, but I decide against it. Instead, uh, opting to wet my finger a little bit, walk up stealthily to where Thonk is sleeping, and uh, oh, give, him a, give him a little wet willy. Oh, wow, okay. Um, roll for initiative. 
<laughs> Good lord. Oh man. Oh wow. What Willie's everybody's favorite pastime. Oh, uh, you really need me to do that? What? No. Roll for initiative? No, no. no. Roll. No, no saying because <laughs> Stalk would, Stalk would was going stab to you. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh, he was like, wait, do you really need me to roll? <laughs> no, I'll, I'll do it. I just wanted to hear about what happened. I was wondering who was going to be the first character to die. <laughs> <laughs> Not even by NPCs. His, his own party is going to murder him. Oh, man. Rerolling a new character by... Uh, uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, Bard. <laughs> I'm trying to get through all the classes in one sitting. Oh. Uh... I mean, that'll wake me with a start. I'll probably swing a fist wildly, but I don't think I don't have a weapon equipped or anything. Mm-hmm. We'll just say, like, I'm I'm not like it's a start. You wake me with a start, my fist goes swinging, whether I connect or not. Doesn't really matter all that much. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking. So, mm-hmm. and uh, as as he wakes up, I say, "Whoa, you thunk! You were having a nightmare. Uh, the wagon's here, though." <sighs> I, oh man. <laughs> The, the other two who are already awake witness this happening. Uh, again, grogginess or otherwise, it's up to you, but you witness this happening. We, wait, we witnessed the, the thing in wet the willy. air? The wet willy. Oh, that's so good. Oh, wait, now, do you, do you guys myself. encourage or do you... Oh, I'm chuckling, but I'm hmm. just trying to keep it contained because yeah. I'm trying to, like, I'm trying to gain thong faction at the moment, so... I think we're both doing, like, the silent laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I stand... I dust myself off. I'm assuming I was just mostly sleeping up against a tree, nodding mm-hmm. off for a little bit. And uh, I will stand up, grab my mace, and uh, look like we're ready to prepare. Um, now, the, the guy said there was going to be a distraction, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So uh, you, you think that to yourself and, and maybe even start kind of like looking for that distraction uh, as the wagon's rolling closer and closer. Is there anything that uh, anybody wants to do, any preparations, anything like that? Because you can... Uh, see and hear the wagon uh, rolling closer and closer and closer down the road. Is there anything anybody wants to do in preparation for this? Um, what does the terrain look like? So we have a path that's coming in and they're coming down this road. We have, do we have something that we can like chill behind or easily flank them? No, no, no problem. So the area that I was describing uh, earlier, that is the, um, uh, that is what you're hiding behind right now. So like I said, it's uh, uh You'll, it'll actually be very visible in a moment. Uh, you'll be able, there's a, a bunch of rocks in front of you with a, almost like a, a naturally formed divot or trench behind it that you're able to hide in and you can you can see through the holes. Uh, there are holes uh, at multiple heights. So even little Addo can see out into the, the road ahead. And um, uh, so you're easily able to stay hidden. However, you are some distance from the road, maybe around 50 feet or so from the road. So it's not like anybody counted step by step to, uh, to get there. And... Um, uh, you do see the wagon approaching. And so it's going from left to right, but still has not come directly in front of you. Okay. Um, all right, I'm going to take cover behind something, and uh, I will ready one of my ranged weapons. I think I'm going to uh, take one of my axes, and I'm just going to, like, hold it in ready. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, to expand, I'm sorry, on the uh, the description I had given to uh, Maggie, um, there along the roads, like I said, there are those rocks that you're hitting behind, whatever. It's a grassy field. The road is um, a rather uh, established road. So, you know, actual gravel and rock and whatnot has been uh, laid over the course of many years to to make this an easily traversed road for wagons and the like. And even somewhat off the road is, is some dirt. Uh, where it's common for people to kind of pull off to the side for a moment for a bite or whatever while they're uh, while they're traveling, uh, and then the rest of it, like I said, is grass. There are trees here and there, but by no means a forest. It's more of uh, of uh, plains with uh, with random trees here and there about and random rocks strewn about. But you are in the best hiding spot for all of you to be together as close as possible to the road right now. So you ready? Your you said what? Uh, where am I throwing axes? Absolutely. Um, anybody else, any form of readying or preparation that you want to do? or I just hold just my hand much? and uh, I whisper, wait for a distraction, look for the proper symbols so we know what we're attacking. Okay, awesome. So um, the uh, wagon, it's not a caravan, it is a single wagon riding up the road with two horses pulling it. Uh, you, as it's getting closer and closer, uh, squinting your eyes to see, uh, and then when it's close enough that you don't necessarily have to squint, you're able to see that there are three people atop it. Uh, one person seems to be a rather common-looking man, uh, tunic and uh, loose 
uh, pants, um, <clears throat> or sorry, um, shirt, loose pants. And uh, he's the one that's uh, actually driving the wagon. And then there are two others uh, sitting atop the wagon itself because it is a, a fully encased wooden, not a covered caravan like Oregon Trails or something. And, um, and they are sitting atop there. They are actually wearing armor. So um, you can see that they're wearing chain shirts and they are kind of like looking about here and there, though lazily so. Um, when the, uh, so the wagon continues to pass, it's cl closer and closer and closer. It comes directly in front of you guys. You, you almost feel a moment of tension, like, where's this distraction? They're about to pass us, they're about to pass us. And um, maybe even as one of you are thinking to act, all of a sudden you start to hear these like, um, almost like high pitched screams. Like, ah! happening coming from uh, across the way even further than the the wagon itself and um, uh, uh, looking to see over there you see small shapes kind of running from the other side of the road into it uh, running at the wagon with their uh, little spears and the like uh, going to attack it um, <clears throat> everybody's perception is high enough that you're able to see it's actually a handful of kobolds that are running at the wagon uh, it does catch the uh, the um, uh, people atop the wagon off guard but very quickly they draw their bows and just start you know, uh, releasing arrow after arrow at them. Uh, the wagon come into a quick stop uh, and they continue running at them, taking that distance as uh, an opportunity to arrow after arrow, uh, fire them down. One of you, one of them even gets close enough to the wagon itself that it, it grabs onto the side of it and starts climbing up it. But then the last arrow is, you know, right into his head and, and he drops down uh, over by the wagon. And so um, that does bring us to this view that you have right here beautiful and now everybody can see uh where it is that you can see from the location that they are yep and, and the exact measurement uh between point a and b is um the closest person to the exact wagon itself would be um rye and that's um 80 feet um the furthest actually everybody's about 80 feet away 80 to 85 feet away uh behind the rock wall in front of you just all right so uh can we uh roll initiative then um <clears throat> uh well yeah absolutely so uh, what you see up there in front of you is the uh, wagon they are not aware of where of of where you are you do have a bit of a surprise at the moment but yeah look, why not let's roll initiative let's get it uh get it in advance let's get it okay mm. i gotta move my character sheet over oh, oh get wrecked oh my god i don't <laughs> All right, so my initiative is a 14. I don't see the initiative tracker. Uh, one second. It's right there. There you okay. go. There we go. And once everybody's in, I'll put it in order. Did you guys select yourselves when you rolled initiative? Because I didn't yeah. see. Oh, I didn't. I, of course, I didn't click on myself when I rolled initiative. Uh, yeah, still I need Thonk and Gromit. Yeah. All right, initiative. Oh, I rolled the same exact number, so nice. that works. <laughs> Do we need to roll it again? Or? Yeah, but he can fix it after. Yep, I can fix it. I just need to see what you read rolled before, which is, oh, a five. Yeah. <laughs> All those high rolls. I wasted them on the foe game. Can you just, yeah. uh... Oh, you have to roll yourself in, and then I can adjust it for you. Uh, Maggie. There we go. It's not like it's much better. Jeez. <laughs> All right, I'll adjust that to that five for you and put it in order. Oop, Jesus. Five. And all right, here we go. So like I said, they're not aware of, um, uh, of you guys at the moment, so it's not like you have to follow the initiative at this point. Um, you kind of have to drop. But just to keep things simplistic, um, why don't we act within the initiative order of your surprise rounds that you have at this point? Because, again, they're not aware of you. I guess so. Uh, Addo, you have the, uh, the initiative. What would you like to do? I would like to, uh, cast Heroism upon... That, that's Thonk next to me, right? Uh, that is, uh, yep. Thonk next to me. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah, so, uh, I'd like to cast Heroism on Thonk. So I gotta click him and... Or no, oh, wait, no, I just do that, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So I get... Yeah. What do I get for Heroism? Da -da. I'm immune mm. to Frightening, and I get some temporary hit points. Cool, cool. Yep. Yep, absolutely. All right. And then that's going to, are you going to move it all? Uh, you know what? I think I'm going to stay there for now. Okay. So that's your awesome. turn. 
Mm-hmm. Awesome. Uh, just so we know, uh, Mathis, that is uh, three temp HP yep. renewed every round uh, on the top of initiative, sorry, on Addo's term, top of initiative um, to your character, okay? Yep. Awesome. All right. Uh, All right. So do you have to move him off the top of the order? No, 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 because we're still not really rolling with initiative at the moment. So Thonk next. Okay. Uh, I will may start making my way towards the wagon. Uh, Absolutely. If you choose to clamber over the rocks, yep. that'll actually take you uh, 20 feet worth of movement to climb over the rocks and through. Unless you can make a successful um, uh, athletics check, then you can reduce that to... I'm not very athletic. I could just go five, like, on top of Addo, and then corner okay. here. That's 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. I'll just Still double... Direction. I'll just double move. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. One, two... Th- I'll, go, I'll go to these bushes here, basically. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's where I'll stay. Uh, perfect. Do you uh, try to do this stealthily at all or no? Me? I'll try. Yeah, I can give it a shot. Okay, so you're already rolling with disadvantage for your stealth, but okay. because you're moving as much as you are and rolling with disadvantage already, I'm going to give you an additional minus five to your disadvantage oh, roll. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Solid. <laughs> so I roll a dead zero. <laughs> so I wasn't stealthy at all. <laughs> I just clamor, clonk, clonk. <laughs> they are very aware of uh of of where you are. <clears throat> ah, that's fine. All right, that's my turn. Awesome. I just see arrows all over the map. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me too. It's just <laughs> awesome. And uh, so, <laughs> Rye. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Rye is going to attempt to stealth in the opposite direction, uh, to the east. So I'll roll for that. Uh, just so you know, if you don't want to have any penalties for stealthing, um, you're going to want to go your movement, which is 30 feet uh, or less. Yeah, that's fine. All good. Okay. Cool. Uh... How are you guys doing those oh, measurements? Sweet Jesus. Uh, off to the left-hand side, there's a little button that looks like a ruler. If you click that, you can do it that way. All right. Don't forget to click back to your pointer, though, or you're going to be confused why you're not doing things correctly later on. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Woo. Oh, yeah, damn. Rye. That was amazing. So Rye has a 21 stealth and very... Think... Oh, damn, my, you're my, a ninja. My stealth is aided by the clumsy thunk drawing their attention. <laughs> I was yeah. like, and, uh... pay attention to me. <laughs> I, I dash towards the bush uh, just adjacent to them. Okay. Awesome. And uh, then next up, and last, uh, lastly, would be Grommet, and then we're gonna jump into initiative with everybody reacting correctly. All right, Grommet's gonna try to run over here. Mm-hmm. It's like about thirty-five feet. Um, so you're gonna have to. You oh. can't really. Yeah, there you go. It's even gonna be a little bit longer actually, because you have to step around those rocks. You know what I mean? It's gonna mm. be like a step, step. I see him. Mm-hmm. Struggles real, guys. Mm. So. Come on, you you're nimble. Speed, right? You can you can jump the wall. Yeah. You should use 30, That's correct? 15. Yeah, so 30 would take me here. That's not where I want to go. No. Um, hmm. Jump the wall, jump the wall. Um, just go, Ham. Just run at him. Maybe. I, mean, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. <laughs> I didn't say nothing. If you, make um, an athletics, if you make an athletics check and it's successful, you'll... uh be able to get through that wall without it hindering your speed. Um, however, if you fail, it will take up your speed and you will not be able to get through it. You'll just, just get to the other side of it and that'll be your whole move. Uh, I think I'm going to go over here. I can make this in. It's 30. So sure. I, I can't move my character, though. What? No, no. Uh, okay. It's because you have just the arrow selected. Just kidding, guys. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. We're good. I'm glad I wasn't the first to make that mistake. Alcohol has not uh, in changed me at all. Okay, we're good. I'm hey, good. Were, you do, were you doing that stealthily? Are you going to roll a stealth check for me? Um, sh- sure. I'll try to be stealthy. I'm probably bigger than the tree. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great You're green. Image You're green. <laughs> Natural <laughs> camouflage. Do I get a benefit for being green? <laughs> <laughs> um. So... If if there is, you do not know. So uh, uh, you go rushing over to the bush over there, much broader than the tree is, but doing the best you can to hide behind the trunk. Um, and uh, finally, the uh, noticing uh, thunk 
noticing Thunk come rushing up and trying to hide behind a tree. All the other uh, people are, you know, kind of turn their attention to him. And um, the two archers quickly knock an arrow and pull back, get ready to fire at him. However, they were still a little bit startled. And so it is uh, Otto first. Go. All right. Uh, let's see. I've got, okay. So I've only got the rapier and the dagger right now, right? So I'm not really able to deal any range damage. So, uh, correct, yeah. so let's, uh, I think I just need to follow along. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Okay. Let's see then. I need to be within 30 feet, I think, to cast those. So I got to move up a little bit. So let me get up by Thonk. Just kind of stick with him. We'll be buddy buddy for this first combat. Uh, Vicious Mockery is 60 feet. So you would still have to move, mm -hmm. um, but not uh, necessarily quite as much. Okay. Uh, I think I'll go here all the same. Okay. Um, that is probably going to be a double move for you. Um, are you trying? Well, you're probably not going to be very stealthy with that either because you double moved and you ran next to where their attention was. So right. uh, they immediately would have spotted you as you ran. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Now Wait, my turn. Uh, so sorry with the double move then is that that's your whole turn. It's your action. Okay. All right. I got it. Yep. Yep. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. So <clears throat> awesome. Oh, let's so, see. Now it's uh Thonk's turn. So, is fifth like third, where every diagonal is five, then ten, then no. five, then ten? No, nope. it's just no, straight no, no, five. No. Straight five, five 10, exactly. 15, 20, 25. Unless you guys want to make your movement more difficult. No, no, I, I'm good with this. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, no, it's fine. I can, okay. I can, I can move here, and that's okay. thirty. Um, is he on top still? I uh, everybody is on top of the wagon. Yes, sir. Yeah, so I can't reach him then. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Thunk, as you run, as you rush towards that wagon, you do see that sigil that we had. Uh, okay, so uh, we know it's earlier. the right wagon. Yep, it's it is emblazoned upon the side of the uh, the, the wagon. Yes. Uh, so I can't hit him. I am assuming I can't reach him, or does do I get like disadvantage swinging at him, being uh, him being as high as he is? Uh, you're swinging with a mace. You're standing at six foot five at the height of that thing. Uh, yep, you can roll with a uh, with a disadvantage because there's a bit of a lip to it. Giving. Oh, uh, uh, actually, my apologies. Uh, one second. Let me go toss this out there. Bam. And um, uh, what he has is three quarters cover. Okay. Um, so you do not roll a disadvantage. He just it's gets just bonuses. To, yep. Okay. It's much more difficult to hit him. That's fine. I'll swing at him with my mace then, and uh, hope for the best. Yeah, that's a good roll, uh, eighteen. But I don't know how with a plus five on his armor. Let's see what happens. Uh, some apologies. Uh, 18 plus 5 in his armor, you actually do miss because of the, uh, that lip up there and you uh, hit in melee. Okay. So uh, you swing and you miss uh, in your aggravation. You do notice that the – so you swing, you hit the, the side of the wagon. You do put a nice crack into the side of the, the wagon. It is nice wood, but you have uh, quite the heavy mace. Uh, in your aggravation, after that swing, uh, immediately – you do notice that there is uh, a ladder on the back of the wagon that would allow you to climb up the top of it, um, okay. as well as uh, steps that would get up to where the uh, driver is sitting. And um, of course, almost immediately in front of where it is that your your character is standing uh, is the door to go into the wagon itself. Um, you hear movements inside of there, okay. uh, but cannot, cannot see in. All right, next up would be the driver. Um, uh, the driver who was kind of like, recovering from the last situation uh sees you come rushing at it and swinging at this thing too he's like ah and trying to like grab the the, the reins to the um to the horses and trying to get yeah yeah get them to go um one second um And so uh, he's trying to get the horses uh, to move, but the horses themselves are still a bit spooked from what had just happened before. So they're not listening to his commands and kind of like pulling a bit of their chains, but not really moving the wagon forward beyond maybe a foot or so. Okay. Uh, that brings us to uh, the first archer, uh, which because everybody just rolled so poorly. Um, the first archer is uh, this one right here. All right. Um, who comes rushing to this, uh, uh, comes rushing to this side. Oops, sorry. Uh, who comes rushing over to the side of the wagon. Um, he looks down at the wagon and takes a shot at um, at Thunk, who is completely open uh, and exposed to him. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, he uh, attacks you, and uh, sadly, he misses. Yes. 
misses. Misses. Beautiful. So, uh, so as he comes uh, rushing over to the edge of the wagon, he knocks an arrow and and uh, uh, goes back and shoots. Uh, you notice it just in time, sliding to the side, allowing the arrow to hit the grounds next to you. Um, you know, looking up at him afterwards, me- meeting eyes. Okay. Uh, after that would be Rai. So Rai sees this arrow get cocked at Thonk, and she breaks out from behind the bush into a sprint. Um, with the intention of dashing onto the mechanism attaching the horses to the carriage. Absolutely. So she's not climbing up onto the carriage. She's mounting uh, the mechanism between the horses and the carriage. Uh, I'm going to attempt to roll stealth. There's no downside to not doing it. So. Not a problem. Uh, you, you are going to roll a disadvantage. You are double yeah. moving. This is going to be very difficult. Mm. Yeah. So All right, so... Uh, it, it, uh, unless somebody is uh, extremely distracted because they're shooting an arrow at an orc or trying to control horses, um, they're going to easily notice you rushing up. So um, you actually only catch the first archer's attention until you get very close and the other two notice you as well. Um, as for hopping up onto the, uh, the wagon, it's going to be very easy for you to do, but you still do have to make a, um, a uh, athletics or a uh, dexterity check for me to do so. Whichever Acro- you- acrobatics? I'm uh, sorry, acrobatics or athletics check, whichever you prefer. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. It, definitely jump up on there and uh, and find your balance on the uh, the poles. That's beautiful. Ten Good out jump. of ten. Mm-hmm. Bravo. Uh, that brings us over to uh, Gramen. All right. Gramen was confused because everyone was being all like hiding behind trees at first, and he's kind of <laughs> derby. So he was like, "Oh, I got to hide behind a tree." So he did that too. But clearly, that's not what's happening now. So he's just gonna full on book it. Um, I guess I gotta run this way. Oh, you can run through the trees. Don't worry about those. Okay. okay. Yeah, don't even worry about Hold those. Hold on. Run then. Look at it. I think I'm here. I can't go any faster than that. Um, and I don't think I can do another action, can I, if I dash? Uh, nope, that'll be your, your turn at this point. So you go running full speed at them. I imagine right. drawing your great axe. I'm axon. going to go enraged as well. Whoa, why is it all white? Hello. Um, what happened? Uh, I don't know, but I can't. It went. I mean, I don't see anything. Is what I'm saying. I don't see anything. Okay. Everything looks normal oh. on my end. Yeah, I'm gonna go in rage, and he's just gonna be like, <laughs> <laughs> "That's awesome. It's great. Oh, jeez, scaring the shit out of them." <laughs> um, just trying to remember if rage does anything for your speed, like barbarians used to have, and the answer I don't is no. Think it gives me any speed. Nope. Okay. Awesome. So you, uh, so you have, uh, you enraged screaming, drawing your weapon, charging as fast as you can at the wagon. Uh, Thonk, who obviously hears it behind him, is very familiar with that, uh, with that type of scream, yeah. um, probably bringing joy to his, uh, to his black heart. Uh, <laughs> you see the eyes that were on you go above your head at the, uh, large oh, form, yeah. charging full speed at the, uh, charge at full speed at the wagon um they're they're eyes wide and they're very afraid of this new uh haven't seen no tree on the enemy (laughs) i had to say it someone enchanted it i was like that's too funny (laughs) (laughs) um the other archer is going to uh uh out of fear turn their attention over to um uh over to gromit and they're going to attack at him um Grommet. What's your AC, Grauman? A 14? Yeah, yeah, 14. Sweet. We have the same AC now. That's great. Oh, Bola. I know I'm Gimp now. Actually, yeah, <laughs> No, I, I just got buffed four. a little bit better because I picked oh, better yeah, armor. Oh, yeah, I was only 14 before. I was like, wait. No, no, my, mine went up because in our practice session, I was only an 11. Oh, stepping it up. Oh, yeah. Well, All that right. looks like it's going to hurt. Maybe uh, you so- like to take this time. Yeah, the attack actually hit. Sorry, I did it wrong, so you saw it. But that's okay. The attack actually, uh, so he... Uh, knocks back the arrow, uh, you know, beads his target as he goes, uh, releases it, and fires him right at Gromman, doing a little flip. Um, sorry, one second. No hurt, Gromman. <laughs> oh, it hit Gromman. No. Oh, oh no. Yeah, oh. 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 Oh, I always roll max. Wait, what did you at me? TPK, TPK. <laughs> it's a short bow. I always roll max at you, poor, poor Maggie. I'm sorry. All right, <laughs> so um, so he uh, take, knocks back the arrow, firing it, and as the arrow flies forward, Grauman is has thrown all 
uh, caution to the wind and uh, is not even trying to dodge out of the way. The arrow barely nicks him, uh, leaving a, a scar in his side, uh, making its way through the hide armor uh, and sticking in as, uh, as Grama comes rushing forward. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually well, you're raged though, so you you can keep going for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, I'm good. All right, uh, awesome. Otto, you're up. Uh, Otto, okay. right before you go, give me one second. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, as I said before, there is movement happening inside the uh, happening inside the wagon. So, there is. Um, and. And lastly, what's going on? Uh, There's movement? movement inside the wagon. Oh, okay. There's movement inside the wagon. <laughs> uh, so, Addo, you go. All right. Uh, so, my speed is the amount of feet I can cover in a, in a move, right? In one yes. single move action, yep. 20, okay. 25 for a halfling. So, so you can dash, I... you can go the whole, you can go double that. Yeah, which would take your whole turn. So I can go like here, for example, and that's that's twenty five, right? Yep. Then then and you can, then, then you have another action. Okay, great. Yeah, that's exactly what I wanted. So, Ado uh, sees his companions struggling a bit, Thunk getting nailed down by another archer, uh, Gramen getting nicked. Hey, he missed me. All right, I'm good. Yeah. No. Yeah. You're, I'm worried <laughs> though, so I'm, I'm coming to jump into action here. Uh, I'd like to cast. One of my favorite spells that I am aware of, Tasha's Hideous Laughter, if at all oh, possible. Beautiful. All right. Okay. And uh, I'm going to hit the archer on the right side with that one. This one right here? That's that the one, one, right that yep. one that just hit Grauman. Awesome. So go ahead. Make okay. your attack, sir. Let's do it. Um, oh, my apologies. So I'm actually making a, a save. You're not making attack. Yeah, okay. yeah. <clears throat> so uh, you cast your spell. Uh, at the uh, at the target, and um, as you finish your spell, uh, a, a moment or two passes, and then all of a sudden you hear the uh, the, the man on top of the wagon. <laughs> kind of gesturing and laughing at Robin and the fact that there's an arrow sticking. <laughs> Otto begins laughing too once he realizes what the joke is to the archer. Uh, no, of course it's further and rages Grauman, but good, awesome, uh, I nice. love it. So uh, that brings us to uh, the the next person. Me, who is uh, actually new. No, one second, I'm sorry. Um, the wagon door uh, comes bursting open oh, as um, somebody is. Uh, somebody steps out of it. Uh, one second, let me... And then... Bam! So the wagon door comes bursting open as uh, oh, a man comes stepping out. He is a, a, a well-dressed man. Um, he's a well-dressed man who is wearing uh, breastplate, ar so, yeah, breastplate armor. Um, he has a rapier at his side that he quickly draws and turns his attention to, uh, to Thunk. Um, uh, Damn you, dumb beasts! I'll kill you for this. And he, you know, uh, draws his rapier and attacks you. <clears throat> well, that's not very nice. I don't appreciate it. Yeah, racist. Exactly. Um, and that is a. I don't know where I come from. The word calling someone's a beast is pretty cool. So uh, he comes uh, thrusting at you with his rapier, uh, but Thonk saw the door kick open, the man step out, had more than enough time to gain his footing, and uh, swats the thing uh, aside with his, uh, with his mace. Uh, afraid that the blade might, uh, might break under the weight of that mace, he does abandon his attack and uh, resettle his stance. Okay. Uh, that is his turn, but uh, immediately behind him, two others come pouring out. Oh, good lord. Uh, now that the door is open, you're no longer caught off guard. Uh, Thonk, you're actually able to take an attack of opportunity against one of these guys, or an opportunity to attack against one of these guys. Absolutely. Ooh. Wreck so, them. All right. So, I take a swing at the first one that exits. Absolutely. Ready? Oh, yep. Go right ahead. You make your attack as I make him visible. 13. Um, token layer. So he comes uh, rushing out, and um, you actually miss him with your 13. Okay. Um, give me one second. I'm just getting these guys out here. 
And uh, so, yeah, these two guys come uh, rushing out. You miss him with your opportunity attack. Uh, one of them comes uh, rushing out and turns his attention to uh, Thunk. The other one comes rushing out and turns his attention to uh, Grauman. Uh, the first guy probably instantly regretting his decision since Gromit is right next to him and rather scary. <laughs> so we'll attack Thunk first. Hey. Uh, attacking Thunk. Uh, so the, this attack, actually, he comes out with his shield in one hand, spear in the other, uh, thrusts at Thunk. Thunk, who was already slightly caught off guard from before, didn't have the correct footing, and he does get hit. Uh, and... Uh, Thunk, uh, he swings at you with that, uh, uh, with that, uh, spear thrusting at you, and you somehow were able to step out of the way even quicker than you expected you would, and the, uh, the blow that seemed as though it could have been, um, uh, very painful is kind of moved a little to the side quicker, uh, further than you thought it would be. Uh, it does almost connect, uh, uh, putting a scratch in your clothing, but only does six points of damage or and three I had, temp HP. Yes, a three of temp HP. Now, those three re-up on my turn. Is that how that uh, works? Uh, it actually re-ups on Addo's turn because Addo is the uh, the caster. Okay, gotcha. Yep. And the other attack is being swung at uh, uh, Grauman. Uh, and uh, despite his uh, everything that's happened, that uh, arrow sticking inside, as this guy comes swinging at his, uh, his spear, Grauman just throws an arm in the way and, and smacks the, uh, the spear to the side. Uh, that, no. finally... <laughs> <laughs> that finally brings us to Thonk's turn. Okay. Uh, obviously a little caught off guard, but my, my focus is now on the man in breastplate armor. Uh, mm -hmm. After taking a, a, a wild swing uh, and missing the guy coming out, my other hand, free of anything, actually just with motion comes forward and reaches forward to try and touch the guy with breastplate to mm -hmm. cast a spell. Uh, and I will roll. 16 awesome. touch. Uh, you easily reach forward and grab this man by his... Uh, I was going uh, for his throat. On his, or whatever. By his throat. Yep, yep. You said this is the well-dressed man, correct? Yes, correct. Awesome. So you, um, right, so you reach forward and you grab this puny neck by the throat. He is only a human, after all, so his neck is, is small and easily broken. As uh, my hand makes contact, there's a bright flash of red as uh, it kind of magic pushes forth through my body into him. And I will do damage. Uh, how, can I roll damage from here? Uh, no. Okay, I gotta roll. Yeah. 3d10. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, yes! <laughs> Holy crap! Oh, oh, and that's it, right? Like, no, because my discipline doesn't give bonus damage, it gives bonus healing. So, yeah, so again, I just reach forward, flash of red, my veins pulse for a minute, and a very small, he could probably only barely see, a smirk just flashes up just a moment as I'm about to touch him and unleash the hell that is my religion upon his body. <laughs> oh, God. Even in the forgiving system of Pathfinder, things would not have gone well for him. <laughs> right. So you re like, as you say, reach forward, grabbing him by his throat, uh, everything as you just described. And as that flash, that flash of red takes over him, he just sees that look on your face and then you see his eyes go dark. His entire body falls limp uh, uh, in your grasp. The only thing holding his, uh, form in the, in, in the air is your, you by his throat. Okay. Uh, that's my turn. Wow. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, God. Okay. That's my good rolls for the rest of the session. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, can you just do me a, a, a favor really quickly there? Um, yeah. What's up? Uh, have, uh, Thunk do a free intimidation check. Absolutely. Uh, a, a, after dropping the boss in one hit. And do it with so again. add your temp hit points. Uh, what was that? Okay, and intimidation at advantage, so fifteen intimidation. Uh, terrific. Um, so uh, everybody around that's kind of scoping the situation, which isn't Gromit or Thunk, but it would be Addo and uh, and Rai. Uh, you just kind of see everybody around you that witnessed this. Not everybody necessarily was working, but everybody that witnessed it, they're just kind of like they're they're uh concerned or scared looks just kind of moved to panic and uh and you see that their uh stomach for this fight is very quickly uh um fleeing so uh, i feel like Doc and Grauman do like a war cry together mm -hmm. after that that was pretty baller <laughs> Otto awesome. shouts to the remaining enemies doesn't look too fun does it <laughs> 
Uh, the driver on the wagon uh, did witness that happen, does see Rye in his face, it, uh, it, scared as hell, uh, immediately turns and uh, starts to try to book it out of there. In doing so, provokes a, an opportunity attack from Rai, which she may choose to or not to take. Uh... It would have to be a melee attack. Yeah. I, I mean, sure. I got I got a little dagger. Hit him in the throat, man. It just takes one nat 20. That's it. I mean, he's above me. I don't think I can really hit him in the throat. Maybe <laughs> nip, his, nip his Achilles. That works, too. <laughs> yeah, sure. Hit. But, um, yeah, I'll take a, a swing. Nice. Awesome. So uh, even with a penalty that you're taking, because he is at the higher uh, level, you are able to swing and connect. Uh, let's see how you do. Oh, that doesn't roll damage. Okay, so. Ooh, that's good. Awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, amazing. Okay, so uh, you, the, the man who's uh, trying to jump off, you do the best you can to swing up at the throat. You aren't able to uh, get the throat, sadly, but you do get a, a very deep scar across his chest. Instantly, blood starts spilling out everywhere. Uh, landing on the ground on the other side of the wagon, um, he falls to the ground, uh, holding onto his chest, and... Um, and just starts sobbing and, and holding himself sobbing uh, on the ground. Um, quickly, he he kind of like uh, falls into shock and loses consciousness. Wow, nice. Rai winces and she's like, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right. shit. All right. Who's next? Uh, after that is the uh, archer. Who is who shot Grauman before? Uh, no, sorry, it's the archer who shot uh, who shot Thunk before. So he witnesses everything that just happened. He um, probably smells like urine at the moment, and he also turns and tries to hightail it out of there. However, um, the safest way down is uh, the ladder. Safety doesn't matter at this point. He's going to hop over the uh, hop over the ledge. Okay. Was. Um, Thank God, I have no range. That's all on you three. Um, and uh, in trying to jump off the wagon uh, uh, and nimbly land, he actually falls with a thud, and uh, it wasn't very nimble at all. He pushes himself up from the ground on the other side. Uh, able to see this would be Addo and Rai. Uh, pushes himself up from the other side and um, and tries to hobble off uh, a bit further into the, the distance. Does not make it very far, though, with a clearly injured leg. Um, next up would be Rai herself. Cool. Is this second archer stood on top of the wagon? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, and he is, he's in a is, fit of laughter. Can though. I assume he's in a fit of laughter? Yeah. yeah yes, he is. <laughs> yeah, he can. He's not going anywhere. <laughs> this is all hilarious to him for some reason. Yeah, that that arrow shot was really funny. Uh, hmm. I had a cool plan, but it's kind of it's kind of redundant now that he's jumped off. Is he running? Uh, hobbling, but yes, in the in a quick and fleeing direction. Okay. Um, Rai just kind of like leans around from the front of the wagon, and uh, and she sees this archer hobbling away, and she just makes a little gun finger motion, um, and she squints with one eye, and you see the eye kind of glow, um, and you see. It's almost like a curse on this man. Uh, his, his aura kind of like darkens and uh, she's casting Hex mm -hmm. on the fleeing archer. Is that bad boy? There we go. Um, so until the spell ends, you do an extra 1d6 to crack damage to a target whenever you hit it with an attack. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then she verbally makes a bang noise and <laughs> you see this um blast of kind of like this black energy uh shriek out of her finger um towards the ranger and that is going to be an eldritch blast Ooh, love that animation fancy <laughs> yeah uh let me just roll it real quick oh oh my god with, with advantage uh I think you have advantage still toggled on. 
I didn't turn it on the first place. That's weird. It is. Activate uh, itself. Um, how do I turn that off? Give me one second. I'll open your character. Cool. Uh, character sheet. It's now clicked to normal, and you should be good to go. Are you going to re-roll it? Uh, please. Cool. All right. Is that... Oh, ju uh, just as good anyways. This man is uh, uh, fleeing away, and once again... Bam. So you blast it with that, uh, with that uh, blast of Eldritch energy. Like you said, it's a very dark uh, uh, blackish color that goes shooting at him. Uh, the attack does connect and um, waiting for the damage. Uh, it's right. That's eight and then a four. Oh, I'm sorry. It rolls damage at the same exact time. My so, yeah, someone in the chat told me if you click the name of the spell underneath the roll, it rolls mm -hmm. damage. Awesome. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah. There you go. Mm -hmm. There you go. There you go. So tw right. uh, 12. Terrific. So um, so you uh, release that blast, and this man's doing the best he can to try to hobble away, but all of a sudden it connects with his back, and he just kind of gets thrown forward uh, uh, an another foot or so as he falls on the ground. He does writhe a little bit and then falls still. Right, kind of like <sighs> blows her fingers. <laughs> Hard West style. <laughs> Uh, that leaves uh, this archer right here, uh, who is going. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited to use this spell more. <laughs> He's laughing maniacally. He is still scared shitless. And so he is going to uh, turn and also try to get off the wagon as quickly as possible. Um, he is not going to try to navigate the ladder, considering he is laughing maniacally, and will do the best he can to jump off the, uh, the other way as well. Uh, so one second for that one. And, oh, God. Um, whether or not he was more nimble doesn't matter, because as he jumps off, his, uh, his laughter causes his foot to catch on the side of the wagon, and he comes falling down face first, thunk, onto the back of them. Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> And he does take, uh, so, oh God, so, <laughs> damage of the way down. Um, uh, uh, laughing maniacally and bloodied, he does start to push himself up off the ground. <laughs> um, but he's not able to get stand, quite stand back up yet. Oh, jeez. This poor man. Yeah. Oh, this is painful. After that goes to Grauman. Grauman, there are two figures standing directly before you at the end of your charge. Yeah, and uh, I know I can't retroactively change anything, but I totally forgot I have resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage. Um, oh, while you're raging, and I did shoot yeah. you while you're raging, so absolutely you can um, retroact that, and so that damage that you took before is four instead of eight. This is our first session. Come on, come on. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Don't worry. Come on. Considering right. I used to allow people in the first three sessions to change their race, gender, class, and spells, and everything else, who cares? <laughs> All right, I'm going to great axe him in the face. Oh, amazing. Awesome. There we go. And then great axe damage. There we go. Eight. Um. So, wait, that's your damage? If the 14... Oh, yeah. 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 Terrific. Sorry, the image just looks slightly different than what I expected. My apologies. So, uh, 14... What is it? 14 points of damage? Eight. Uh, no, eight damage 14 right, eight to hit eight damage. eight damage yeah gotcha again just that the format looks a little different from how we did it last week anyway so uh eight points of damage at this guy and um my apologies uh he is still standing though very bloody uh, so your axe comes uh comes swinging down at the guy and um he does the best he can to try to put a shield in the way but you uh uh swing through his protection from the shield it only moves it to the side from the center of his chest uh to uh his thigh and you do get a nice uh good nick uh, along his thigh or slash along his thigh it is now bleeding profusely you can see it soaking down the uh the side of his uh his leggings <clears throat> where After like Cute. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> after that would be uh, back to the top of initiative with Adam. Okay. Uh, so we've got... Uh, that means that uh, your thunk, your... Yep. All right, took okay. care of it. Yep. Thank you. We've only got the two left, right? Uh, two, yeah. And the one guy, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Otto is going to get his wits about him. Go ahead and dash right into the foray here. Think of it. And use the rapier. Hit this guy right here. Awesome. Nice. Broke him. Nice. Mm-hmm. 
And there's our damage. Oh, beautiful. So um, immediately after uh, uh, Grauman swings that axe and breaks through his defenses and uh, puts that gash in his leg, he instantly falls to, to, to nurse that leg, like uh, drops his uh, defense to the side to, to nurse that leg. You see the perfect opening and come in with your rapier and um, <clears throat> uh, stab through his open defenses on the other side. You hit him right through his stomach, uh, maybe even piercing the other side of him. And uh, he drops to the ground, uh, holding his wounds and kind of writhing and, and, and howling in pain. Uh, and I go for a fist bump with Grauman. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. She's raging, so she just punches you in the face. She's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fist bumps, you marry you. <laughs> fist bump sends me back a few inches. Yeah. <laughs> I'm imagining that uh, that Thor Hulk scene in Avengers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like Jaws your shoulder. <laughs> oh, awesome. All right. Um, so, Grauman, please roll damage against Ado. No. Uh, <laughs> and he's dead. Uh, so, yeah, one, yeah, one, one of the guards, I guess. Um, and uh, this one. Okay, so that brings us to. Um, uh, that remaining guard who just kind of witnessed everything happening finally has the ability to react to all of this chaos and is just like, I'm not getting paid enough and also turns in and, and, and tries to run. So Grauman, you're the only one close enough to be able to get an opportunity attack, please. All right, I'll take it. Um, am I doing this with my great X then? Uh, right, yes. Oh, that's plus two because it's plus opportunity, right? Uh, opportunity attack doesn't give you an additional bonus. Oh, though. it doesn't give me anything. All right. Well, 11, does it hit? Uh, sadly, 11 does not hit. He's wow, able wow, to wow. Uh, evade your attack as he uh, as he runs and makes the... Sorry. That is not working. Uh, 10, 20, uh, 30, 40, and is able to make it as far as here. Uh, it's going to be... That's going to have to be right. Little girl. As he double moves... <laughs> Yep, yes. awesome. So that, that is that. Um, after uh, his turn goes to Thunk. It's not much I can do to catch up. Oh, you can do it. Uh, well, no, I can, well, I can double move, but I can't swing, and he'll just, it'll take a while before I can catch up. So it's, I'm going to shout, uh, Rai, the straggler is yours. And uh, I'm going to make my way over to... There is that one on the other side of the wagon yeah. that is still laughing maniacally. That's where I'm going. <laughs> Uh, which is this one right here, right? Okay, as he sees you approaching, uh, walking menacingly up towards him, and yes, that is the correct one. Okay. He's just kind of like, ah! <laughs> trying try to push himself up off the ground. He looks up at you. Uh, I mean, you can see his eyes are pleading for mercy, but yeah. he is just laughing in the face. Sucks for him. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, I flash a very small, toothy smile at him as I pull a very crude, cruel, crooked-looking dagger that seems to serve no purpose, practical purpose. It's jutted in all the wrong ways, and it just does not look like it would serve any purpose. And I'll, like, fall to my knees onto his stomach to hold him down and just kind of take the dagger and just plunge it into his throat. Awesome. Uh, Addo, Jesus. you are able... <laughs> not Addo, my apologies. Oh, I is able to see this. The other two, it's out of their uh, perception. So. so that laugh turns into a gurgle. Mm. Sure make, your, uh, make your attack. And uh, you can make it with with advantage. Oh, I have to roll for this shit? Oh, damn it. All right. Yeah, uh, with, with advantage. With advantage. Uh, my dagger was just like kind of decoration, so I don't have it as like an actual weapon. Can I just roll it? Um, it's with your with your strength. All right. Just... Or your deck. So, so with, a plus, with a plus three. Okay. I just I'll roll my mace because it is a plus three. There you go. All right. Oh, I... <laughs> double 19s. Jesus. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm just, I, whatever damage you would do, I'm just looking to just push it into Not us. Not a problem. It is 1d4 plus uh, 1, but don't worry about it. That is enough to, to finish the job at this point. So you do, you push it into him, and as you said, push it into his belly, you said? No, his throat. Oh, I'm sorry. You push it into his throat, and as you said, that laughing becomes a gurgle. Uh, actually, the worst part of it is even though the dagger is very wicked looking, even though you are doing it in a very vital area, the probably the most damaging part of this whole thing is how his body is continuing to convulse with laughter uh, out of his control <laughs> as his blade enters him, just making oh. this big mess of a wound in his throat so blood is just spilling everywhere bits of it kind of squirting up at you and and it is it is just a mess and the the, the laughter as yeah. the, as the laughter becomes like a gurgle 
Uh, his dying smile transfers to my face as I sl slowly smile as well. That's creepy. And next is Rye. Rye's like straight horrified by this. <laughs> she, she like sees the blood will come up and she's like, dude. And she like holds her left hand to her face so she can't see him. And then makes a sweeping motion to transfer Hex to the fleeing uh, soldier. And then just fires an Eldritch Blast in the guy's back. And the whole time she's just got her hand like this. Works so she me. can't see Thonk. God. All right. Okay. How long is the range on the Eldritch Blast? 120 feet actually says it right there. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, so your blast of eleven, uh, despite the fact that they are fleeing, um, uh, the blast of, uh, of eleven is not enough. Um, kind of like looking back, hearing the gurgling and everything, uh, yeah. they, you do catch his eye, and he sees the blast coming. Kind of jumps out of the way just enough to have your blast hit the tree. So um, <clears throat> you make your attack best you can, but sadly you hit the tree instead. And but, like uh, misses, she hits the tree. And then she kind of like looks back again and immediately just starts gagging. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. I um, thought the halfling was going to be the first to throw up. Yeah, right? <laughs> uh, Rai does still have her move action. If you wish to try to uh, take this person on foot, up to you. Yeah, I think I, think I like start stumbling this way. Uh, <laughs> Gotta get away. To get out of my field of vision, but I only go about I only go about fifteen feet. He's this guy's running. I'm just kind of like stumbling away Absolutely. from what I just witnessed. Oh God. Okay, uh, Gramen, there's carnage in front of you with uh, the uh, seemingly uninjured corpse of the the uh, well dressed man, uh, the one that the halfling just finished in front of you, and um, uh, the dead kobold. But there is still uh, commotion happening on the other side of the wagon. So this guy's dead. Uh, he is. He was All finished right. by happening. Or at the very least, writhing on the grounds uh, <laughs> near death. All right. I am going to run here. And do I see anything that... You see that guy trying to flee, the one that just fleed you, uh, just, just ran from you moments ago. So this guy? Nope. Nope. It's actually this one right here. Oh, that guy. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, all right. How far have I run? I can actually do... 25... Does this make things easier for you guys? Yeah, some some death action. Uh, so I can go here. Um, I'm gonna try to throw throw a weapon at him. I'll go for my two or my little axe. And what's, we'll the, what's the range on that thing? It is oh, sixty. Either that or I'm gonna throw a javelin. So let's see how far I. Guys, for me, is it, oh. is it a hand axe or a throwing axe? It's a 60. Uh, I believe it's supposed to be a throwing axe. It's thrown light. Are you looking it up? Then I'll just grab a javelin. No, I mean, mine says 60. Oh, awesome, cool. But I think it's a, I think it's supposed to be 2060, meaning yeah, 20 like, um, but he's only 30 feet. Yeah, 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 but anything that's beyond that initial range, you get disadvantage. Um, so the uh, second one is like the okay. Well, I'll range. just throw a javelin then. That's cool. Perfect. Awesome, cool. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I bust out a javelin. I'm gonna throw it at him. I guess it's Dex, right? This time. Uh, yeah. One d twenty plus. What's my Dex? I have plus two. Let's see. Oh damn! Oh, oh yes! Ooh, oh shit! Yes. Beautiful. Oh, 1D, and I just get 1D6, right? Because that's how javelin is. Uh, 1D6 plus your your uh, dexterity. Oh, so it's uh, 6. Awesome. So um, you throw the javelin at the guy, and uh, unlike the... Um, the uh, Eldritch Blast, the javelin comes flying very close to the, uh, to the guy, uh, narrowly missing him, completely throwing him off his guard, and, uh, but he is still standing and starting to run. I, I, yeah. And continue to run. I didn't he is pin him to the tree over there. I'm sorry. I didn't pin him to the tree. Uh, no, no, no. It's it's <laughs> lands somewhere on the ground nearby. All right. Next is um, after Gromit is Otto. All right, Otto. Stop right, well, him. We gotta we gotta catch this guy, huh? Yeah. So let's see. I'm gonna 
Got any more of them laughter tricks? <laughs> I don't know if that's going to slow him down, though. All right, let's go. One, two, three, four, five. We're going to move up to here. Okay. And uh, I believe this puts me within range for dissonant whispers. So I'm going to try to unleash one of those. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I believe yeah. you're exactly in range for because I'm right, pretty perfect. sure that's uh, 30 go. feet. Mm hmm. It says 60 feet. Oh, 60 feet. Cool. Oh, awesome. good. Yeah. So he has awesome. to make a wisdom save. <sighs> okay. It's not exactly a strong suit. Um, yeah, no, I don't. Yeah, no. So the target must make a wisdom save on a failed save. He takes 3d6 psychic damage. Oh, I'm aware. All I'm right. Very aware. <laughs> Roll that 3d6, bear. How's, uh, how's, how's it looking? Uh, slash. Oh, that's uh, me. Oh, that's yeah, me. Yeah. My bad. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought I was waiting on a uh, DM. Okay. <laughs> We're all oh. like waiting for the roll. <laughs> what's what's the uh, what's the input here? Uh, slash roll space three d six. Three d six. Okay. There you go. There you go. Thirteen. Yes. He's done. Oh, gorgeous. Oh my god. So, um, <clears throat> so he uh he uh, as he's continuing to try to run away, that uh javelin just narrowly missing him, completely throwing him off guard and uh, kind of making uh, winding him a bit. Um, you just kind of come over and just start whispering something at him. And, uh, and he just kind of like gets, stops immediately in his tracks and just kind of like turns to look back in your direction as you see like fear overcome his, uh, his face. And he's like, ah, 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 and just kind of uh, falls to the ground screaming and, and writhing for a few, for you know, a few seconds or so before the, the screams kind of become more pathetic and muffled. And, and then he just falls silent. Do, uh, do my companions notice this take place? Uh, they do, yeah. Um, even Gravin, who's in rage. And uh, I, d I decide if they're wondering what happened to just return their looks with a with a big smile. <laughs> um, so you return the look of uh, of Grive and Gravin uh, easily with a big smile. But as you turn and return that look to Thonk, that's when you see the continuing to spew uh, blood out of the neck of the guy by uh, Thonk's feet, and Thonk kind of like covered in blood, some squirts on his face, some on his chest tons all over his hands and arms and um i don't know if you continue to smile at him or not my, my smile very quickly fades down into a <laughs> confused and horrified look <laughs> uh and that is uh yeah that right. ends initiative well let's so, uh, uh we'll cut the, we'll take a quick break i know we only have about a half hour 45 ish left we we yeah. skipped our second break because we were in the middle of combat i figured we finished that up uh let's take a quick break bathrooms drinks and we'll uh we'll wrap everything up when we come back Thank you guys awesome. so much for watching. Stick around. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 